So, are you ready for Pastor Edwin? Before he comes out, I want you to know this. This guy is the only Malaysian that I knew of who has been invited into the palace of the Agong, a Christian, I'm talking about a Christian pastor. Once upon a time, this guy, when he flies to Manila, President Marcos will send a limousine to fetch him from the airport. Why? Because he is the biggest smuggler. <laughs> he owns oil rigs in Borneo. He travels with suitcase like James Bond movie, suitcase of cash. This is a guy who flies to Bangkok for breakfast, flies to Hong Kong for lunch, and flies to Singapore for dinner. That was who he was last time. But God break him. God transform him. God changes him dramatically. Everything that he had in the past, everything gone, taken away. Hallelujah. But God gave him something more beautiful, an international ministry. He travels the world. He's been to the palace of the Agong. He has been to the White House where he has prayed for Trump. He has also prayed for Obama. I believe no Malaysian has done that, you know. <laughs> but what can we learn here? I know you are from the West, my brother. <laughs> Uh, Kubal from Australia. But it's time for Asians to rise up. God can use Asians, amen. For far too long we've been looking to the West. It's time for the West to look to us and learn from us. Hallelujah. Praise God. So if God can bring an Asian to the White House and to pray for presidents, God can use you. Hallelujah. Praise God. But before you go to the White House, make sure you are found in His house first. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come, my brother. Oh, Lord. Turn it up, please. Wait, wait, wait for the... Okay, try again. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Testing, one, two. Is it on? Okay. My Pro 3, huh? Thank you, Pastor Terrence. And how are you all? Great. Are you sleepy? No. I am. This time he's not merciful. Last year was 45 minutes, but today was nine. Uh, <laughs> 93 minutes. So give a hand to the Lord. Um, <clears throat> Pastor Terrence make life easy for me. You know, with all the revelation and word that came, are you blessed? Amen. Sure you're blessed, huh? Amen. What normally people do when you are blessed? Huh? You start thinking now. <laughs> That's good. What do you do when you are blessed? Huh? Okay, give me Galatians 6, verse 6 and 7. Hallelujah. Let's, uh, what the book of Acts says, when the people of God, when Jesus came, when the people of God, his disciple, they turned everything upside down. Amen. So tonight, we're going to do that. He says, let him who is taught 
the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Seven, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap. So you want to be deceived? No? Then we bless the man of God. You know, in his sharing from the day one session, he spoke about Leshem Hapanim. He spoke about Kafa. He spoke about Yada. He spoke last night about Kanonia. These are all Hebrew. Amazing, huh? So if you are the show brain, and I believe in the life of Pastor Terence and Tiara, they went through that. Because the brain, they sprinkle that frankincense there. And the texture changes. Amen? Pastor Terence's life has changed. 30 years ago, he worshipped Satan. Now God gave him a fire in his hand. And thank God only one hand, huh? Because he will be on fire all the time. So, have you seen someone on fire? What happened to them? They will go to the hospital. But one of our church in Kota Kinabalu, Many years ago, maybe 18, 19 years ago, we were renovating the sanctuary. We haven't started any worship there, but we are renovating and we have three boys who are doing the work. It's about 10 in the morning. And then the people down there, because we are on the third floor, there's two fire machine came, you know, the bomba, um, what do you call them? Yeah, the fire engine came too. Ooh, the whole town, full of people watching the church building. It's on fire. So the officers ran up, maybe five of them, he said, they opened, pushed the door and say, where is the fire? Then one of the boys says, what fire? <laughs> we have not started cooking. <laughs> See? Fire. You're having that fire. But before that fire carries you, you have to be burned first. You know, all the drosses in your life. It has to be taken out. Amen? Amen. Did you know how Terence came about today like that? Because he is willing to pay the price. He is willing to be changed from within and out so that the world will see what Jesus has done and it will also happen to you and me we are not people oh Lord bless 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 even if God wants to bless us we have responsibility to do but the church has come to a thinking they always want to be blessed. Blessing comes with responsibility. Blessing comes with a price. This man, you see him now, but when you see him before, he was different. You don't want to be a friend of him. Yeah. 
First time I saw him, this man is different. Yeah. Because he went to jail 14 times only. Yeah. Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> that is promotion, huh? <laughs> so now you saw him like that, you want to make friends with him, huh? Ay, yo, yo. But did you realize that, as I said, blessing comes with a price, with a discipline, and with responsibility. I don't know whether you are discerning or you are seeing things, but I do discern that the house went through tremendous warfare this year. But we thank God with the tremendous warfare that they went through. Pastor Terence and Tiara is still in one piece. Except Pastor Tiara lost a little bit of weight. But the husband increased. Because during the warfare, he's enjoying eating. And always the wife is concerned. Oh, this is getting hotter. <laughs> but you know, my brothers and sisters, this few session he's been sharing to us. He spoke about frankincense, he spoke about myrrh. And these are the gifts that the wise man brought to baby Jesus 2,000 years ago. And this guy has received and enjoyed that gift too in his life. Maybe some portion of the goal. But last night, the Lord told me. He says, Honor the man of God of the house. Tell him that God is going to give gold to him. Amen. So gold speak about for that three gifts for Jesus. They use that gold for their expenses to Egypt. So we want, we want to bless the man of God of the house. We will collect an offering. Because that's the reason why I'm standing here, just to collect the offering. <laughs> but it's for Pastor Terence and Tiara. So elders of the church, treasurer of the church, let me remind you, every single cent that is collected now is for Pastor Terence and his family. Because I want to obey what God says last night. It's the beginning of the goal, Pastor. It's the beginning of the goal. Because he paid a price. Did you realize what happened to this year? You have not seen. But we are lesser this year, more last year. But it doesn't matter. The matter is, are we standing together as one? When our brother and our sister is going through something, are you standing with him or with her? To the glory of God. The body of Christ is one. And Jesus is always the head. So let us stand together. Ashes, can you bring that bag? Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah. 
Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah, sing. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah. Sing Sing hallelujah. To the Lord, Hallelujah! Praise you, Jesus. You deserve the glory, Lord. Hallelujah! Praise you, Jesus. Now, I just uh, just obeying. Okay, sit down. Sit down. I want Pastor Terence and Tiara to come forward here. Hallelujah. Oh, come, come. Just stand up here in front. And all the leadership of the church come forward, but stand behind them. Come. Whoever you are, if you are a leader of this church, Come. Intercessors group, the women yes. intercessors group, come. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on quickly. Unless you are willing to wait for another 93 minutes of preaching. <laughs> yeah. These are the people of God who have given their heart, their lives. to minister and to serve our Lord under ARC. Yes, come. Hmm. You like me to call the angels also? Okay. Come closer to him. Yeah. Now, church, let us raise our hand to them. I'm just obeying, okay? We're going to pray for them. And this prayer is very specific. We're going to tear down the work of the enemy who's trying to warfare against the people of God who has been called by God to serve his kingdom under ARC. Lord, in the name of Jesus, with the power of your throne, we command and say right now, in the name of Jesus, we nullify the power of the enemy. We cast you right now out of this leadership, out of this ministry, this church, as far as the east and the west. In Jesus Christ's name. Lord, send hedge of fire protection upon them. Cover them by the blood of Jesus. And send your angels to surround them day and night. Bless, unite, empower, and anoint for your greater glory, Lord. We love you, Jesus. And we stand with them to proclaim your gospel, to bring the teaching of the kingdom, and also to honor families. 
We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now I can say the benediction. <laughs> and I will sit. But uh, the problem with me is if you give me this, it, it becomes my friend. <laughs> and I, I don't like to put it down anymore. So, Pastor Cool, just stay cool, okay? <laughs> just wait for your time. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> no, we are orderly people because I believe our God is a God of order. Amen. So, we will stop on time. So, I have another 10 minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. You are good. Jesus is good. Amen. Yeah. I'm returning on the second evening flight to KK. And I'm flying to Los Angeles on the 5th. That's on, I think, um, Thursday. I am speaking in one of the university. They are having their graduation and I am the invited speaker at the same time. I will be teaching in the university and various places in Los Angeles and also northern part, including Alaska and also in Washington. There's two big Indonesian church in Washington that is waiting. They have invited me 12 years ago until today I cannot come. <laughs> so I'm honored for them to invite me again and I will be there. And uh, when I return uh, in October, I will just stay a few days with my wife. I want to bring her to U.S. this time. She says, no, not this time. You know, the ladies also have their plan. <laughs> so, that's one of your intercession, okay? You need to pray for your wife. Because they pray for the husband. And they become very discerning. They flow accordingly. They don't flow what I say. <laughs> so, and mind you, because the ladies love to pray, and I'm surrounded by three of them, I'm always, I surrender all. So it's good to surrender. So I will be with her for a few days and I will fly down south to Kuching. Um, I have a seminar going on there. And after that, I will go into Kalimantan. There are also a number of churches that is gathering for October. Then I will come out in a week and then I will come back to KK and I have also churches in the northern part of Sabah which I need to go because this year alone from January to today we have started six and we have also a Penan church in the deep jungle of Sarawak when Pastor Terence says he showed the, the banner, one of them is in the middle of Sarawak. I said, thank you, Lord. That is the banner we started last Good Friday. In the deep jungle of Sarawak called Punanba. You have to ride a boat from Cebu six and a half hours on the boat. It's a huge a wide river, you know, probably, I don't know, one, 
one kilometer wide, but the length, you go by hours and hours. I don't know how many miles is that. But deep down there, we have these beautiful people called Penan. They have accepted the Lord and they want to have a church. Other people are running away. We went in. <laughs> Seven years ago, SIB went in. They ran out. <laughs> so here I am, just obeying. I don't have much. I only have Jesus. And don't play with my Jesus, huh? <laughs> don't play. What you can say is don't play, play. He's powerful. Amen? Because he created heaven and earth. And you have him with you. So don't play play. Amen? Now I'm just entertaining you now. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Pastor Cool is laughing. <laughs> But he almost got hijacked his message. <laughs> Remember what he said this morning? The wheat and the grapes almost got hijacked. Or hijacked by our speaker, <laughs> by our host. Now, because of the gifting in his life, that's why he just enjoying and flowing. If we don't understand, we will kick him. <laughs> but that is the gift of God for him. You see, after worshiping, and he allowed the worship, worship team just standing there, then he said, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I'm used to this already. I've been coming here for three times now. The last time was 45 minutes, last year. This year, mm, because of Mardeka, 93. <laughs> Only, huh? Yeah, I was telling myself, hopefully no more promotion. <laughs> because if he promote the CD, promote the book, I will only promote myself. <laughs> But Jesus is good. Have you learned something? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Sure, huh? Yes. What did you learn? Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Carry that with you. Because the Filipino says, that is your baun. Yeah, that is your take away. Carry it, bring it wherever you go. You know, whatever you learn, and when you share it to others, do you know that God is so glorified? He take pride of it. Ah, he will say, look, this is my children. He's so happy. You know? So take it and share it. Yeah, don't be stingy. Don't be kuripot, huh? <laughs> share it. Because Asia need it. If we only shout Asia, Asia in ARC Penang, we can never harvest Asia. Asia need you and all of us. That's why the Australians are coming the Scottish are coming. <laughs> yeah. But truly, Pastor Terence, I have a confession to do. This year, truly, I did not say anything about tongues of fire. I was so quiet. Because this year, God has mandated me for three continent US, Asia and South Pacific that's Pastor Cool 
Well, he's in Melbourne. I was in Gold Coast last May, ministering to the white church and the Aborigin church. It's powerful and beautiful. So this year alone is already three continents. But God put into our life five continents, including Europe and Africa. So we rejoice because Jesus is good. But again, what have we learned from the day when we give our life to Jesus? What did we learn along the way? Many of us, we only remember the pain, the hurt, the rejection, and also the persecution. Sometimes we forgot to carry the goodness of God, the teaching of God, the discipline of God that works in us. In this few sessions that Pastor Terence is teaching, he says, learn to be bent. Learn to be changed by God. As you learn to be changed by God, you have that transaction took place. That transaction changed what you have and who you are. And it becomes Jesus on. You know, when the devil was going around and he came also before the Lord. Hey, devil, where have you been? God asked him. I went around, he says. Have you considered my servant's job? Because God knows. And you know. How is the life of Job? A lot of pain, sickness. The wife left him. All the children died. All his richness gone. But in all that, Job did not sin. How about us? How is your going? Is it good? Is it bad? Are you rejected? Are you persecuted? That's normal. Jesus has no sin. They crucify him. Would you like to test how to be crucified? Terence knows. That's why he's able to carry the spree that God put inside him. Stewardship is important. Whatever God put in us, are you willing to carry? Or are you only want to carry it when good times happen? When bad times, hmm, ayawko. No more. No. Carry what you learn. Amen? Why do we need to carry that? Because God wants us to be fruitful. Amen? I believe the theme of tongues and fire this year is fruitfulness be fruitful no matter what life you are facing pain rejected persecution trial you have to be fruitful because okay let's see genesis 1 verse 1 you know why, why Pastor Terence, the first session, he read verse 2 because he purposely left verse 1 for me. <laughs> so 
I tell the Lord, I said, Lord, thank you for the one. You remember, right? The first time he left verse 1, he only took verse 2. He says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What an introduction to the Holy Bible. The first verse. In the beginning, God created. He is a manufacturer. He creates. He is a doer. He does something. He produces something. He works. He is fruitful. Amen? For you and me to enjoy this creation that he has done. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Can you see something there? Why God created how many heavens? With an S, plural. Of course, we saw in the New Testament, Paul says, he saw a man in the third heaven. But why God created heavens, plural? Ah. There is heavens spiritual. There is also heaven physical. Heaven physical speaks about the moon, the stars, the planetary system. Heaven spiritual is where God lives. He dwells. It is a dimension. Mm, it's a dimension. God doesn't dwell in the physical universe because God was there already when this thing was created. He was already. So God cannot stay or live or dwell in a place that he creates. He was Outside and bigger and greater. Hallelujah. So, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, whatever you learn here, or even in your church, or even in your private time with the Lord, bring it and make yourself fruitful in the things that God has called you. So if you say in ministry, yes, be fruitful. In business, yes, because that's the gift that God has given to you. But if you're not a businessman, don't try to be one. Because that is not yours. Amen? Be the one that you are. Then you will enjoy life. Look at our brother Cool. That's why he, his father gave him the name Cool. Because <laughs> he's cool. You know? He, and he likes to make people older. <laughs> yeah, if a person is 30, he says 60. <laughs> because he's cool. Cool, man. But anyway, God is good. Yeah. Genesis 1, 28. Let us see how we are going to be fruitful. Okay, we start from 26. This is how God gives the purpose, the vision, and the mission for Adam. To do. Then God said, let us make man in our image. So Adam is made by God in his image. How are you going to learn something there? I believe every day you, you see a mirror, right? You go and take your shower or you go into your comfort room or your toilets. 
you see there is a mirror there. Who do you see? Yourself. That is your image, right? So God created Adam in his image. Wow. So, women, I don't know about the men, but in Sabah, only the women wear lipsticks and uh, wear, wear, wear makeups and eye, eye shadow, all the shadow, whatever. <laughs> but I don't know in Penang whether the men also do shadow, shadow. <laughs> you know? But anyway, women don't cover up so much with the makeup because your face is the image of God. <laughs> Amen? Why you want to beautify some more? You are already beautiful. Yes. I see Jesus in you, in your face. And some people went to the extreme. They want surgery on their nose, <laughs> on their lips. No. You have the image of God. Amen. According to our likeness. Mm, this is way again. According to the likeness of God. This speak about that character inside. So how many believers today are you in the likeness inside like God? Hmm? That's why God says, if someone slap you on the left or right, right, you also give left. <laughs> if somebody wants to walk you one mile, go for another extra. Amen? It's the likeness. He's saying about the likeness in us. Is that likeness happening? Oh, it's Pacquiao time. Building that likeness needs your response. We need the pastor to do that, telling you the word, correcting, but your response is important. I surrender all. Don't cry. When God wants to replenish something, they want to take something out there, don't cry, just give. If possible, throw it out, you know. Yeah. Don't. Hey, hey, hey. Ah. Hallelujah. Pastor Terence, speak about this. Don't hold on to power. Don't hold on to the money. I surrender all. Is that so, Pastor? He already introduced me earlier on, yes. But in the beginning, I did not understand. I also like you. No, 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 no. I still like my breakfast in Bangkok, ma. <laughs> and I still like my haircut in Hong Kong, le. <laughs> That's how the Hokkien people speak. So we will follow a little, little only. Okay, where's my word? Let them have dominion over the fish and the seas, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing. This is the vision and the mission and the purpose God created. The human in the image of God, in the likeness inside. To have dominion. To have power and authority. Are you having that? You are missing the vision. That's why there is no power, no authority, no breakthrough. Please carry that dominion, power and authority of Jesus in your life. Carry it. Hallelujah. 28, eh, 27, sorry. 
So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. See, God created so good lah. Male and female. But suddenly the world created another one. <laughs> and they don't know how to give a name because they are human. So they call them he and she. <laughs> he, she. What a name. But in the beginning it's male and female. Only after the fall, Adam changed that. He gave the female a name called Eve. But in the beginning, it is only male and female. Adam. Mankind. Yeah. Genesis 5, 2. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. Adam, mankind. But after the fall, Genesis 3, 20, he gave a name to Eve. And Adam called his wife name Eve because she was the mother of all living. It is not God who gave the woman a name. It is the fall that make Adam give the woman a name. That's why we have problem. Sorry, woman, huh? <laughs> yeah? But anyway, we want to be having that dominion. Amen? Verse 28. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be! What is that? Fruitful! And multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the living things that move on the earth. That is the reason why we have been created. To be fruitful. And what more? We are in the kingdom. We know the word. We understand the word. We have the authority and power and dominion. Why we still fight with one another? Why we divide ourselves? Why we hurt the heart of the Father? We can never change the body of Christ. The head is always Jesus Christ. And we are the body. Why we fight? That's why we are not multiplying. We are not fruitful. Because we are so divided. And thank God for this man who has been to the lockup for I don't know for whatever reason, only 14 times. <laughs> and he wants fire in his hand, but from the different source. Now, he got that true fire. And he is calling the body again in Asia. He's a humble man because if I were him, world. But he says Asia only. That's why ARC. <laughs> you know? So he's calling all the big family of Jesus Christ in Asia. He wants to ignite with the fire of Jesus Christ. And now all of us are part of this. No turning back, you know? God says in his word, Luke 9 verse 62. Once you put your hand on the plow, you turn back. Wala na. You are not worthy for the kingdom. Right? But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand on the plow and looking back is fit 
for the kingdom of God. So, this morning, Dr. Buckley says, Many times I ran away, but now I return. <laughs> so, Pastor, do you have any injection for a permanent follower of Jesus Christ? <laughs> we inject him tonight. Yeah? Because he might turn back again. <laughs> and many, maybe some of you. So let's put that injection outside. Everybody you're going back later, inject. <laughs> we have Dr. Cool here to, to inject. <laughs> I think he's all enough because his hair and mine is different color. <laughs> but you know, these few nights, I'm enjoying life here, man. I feel home. I'm fed well. No complaint. And my wife called me up. He says, hey, how are you? You've forgotten me? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. But I'm enjoying life here. Oh, yeah, you're enjoying the food. Control, huh? Control. Huh? <laughs> so I'm controlling but last night, because I'm seated in front of Pastor Chris, Christy, is it? Yeah. Hey, he's eating well. I'm eating well also. Oh. <laughs> now, just now, when Pastor Terrence was preaching, I repent. <laughs> because Pastor Terrence says, a church is not a competition. Ah, oh, I said last night, I compete eating. <laughs> I have to repent. So I repented. But maybe tonight we will eat again. <laughs> so join, join me eating again, okay? Because I love eating. Except when I'm back home, I don't eat. Ah, that's the trick. So if you want to ask how the trick goes, we will collect another offering. <laughs> Okay, give applause to Jesus first. He's good, huh? Yeah. Amen. Let's go back to 28 and see what does it say? Be fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue. We are in control, my brothers and sisters. And this vision, this purpose, this mission is still there. For you and me to run. So don't leave us behind. We run together. Amen. So we, we help. We bless. We support. We pray for Pastor Terrence. And the church here. Okay. Yeah. They, because of them we are here. Yeah. Because of them we eat a lot also. And it's contagious, you know. Because of them, our friend, the owner of the hotel, also in, involved now. <laughs> you see? What did we do this morning at the hotel? We worship. Her. Huh? Who says in Malaysia you cannot worship? We can. Just close the door. And this morning was powerful because we worship at the living stone. <laughs> I haven't heard any stone that is living only in Pulau Pinang. <laughs> hey, hallelujah! That's why the African likes me. Because I make the stone living. <laughs> no, you did. You are the one who gave that name. I just copy and paste. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be fruitful. Okay? Be fruitful. Yeah. You know, Jesus never stopped being fruitful. Genesis 1 verse 11 and 12. Look at this word. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit 
tree that yield fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. Verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yield seed according to its kind, and that the tree that yields fruits, whose seed is in itself according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. So, the earth was there. It, it is red, brownish. It's called Adama. Red, brownish earth. So now God spoke. That is where the seed, he says. Where is that word? Then God said, let the earth bring forth. That is his word, that is his seed. From the unseen, from the mouth of God, to the seen, S-E-E-N, huh? the ground. What happened? The herbs, the tree, the fruit tree, the flowers, showed up. God himself is always making fruit. What about you and me? So every seed, there is a fruit. And every fruit, there is a seed. Hallelujah. So God created every one of us, including myself. Whatever position and situation that you are, there is a seed that is in you. And that comes from the Lord. And that seed, whatever circumstances, whatever environment, it cannot destroy the seed. And it cannot influence that seed. Because that seed is from God. And that's how you, who you are. Amen? And if that seed, example, it's a mango because the Filipino and the Thailand are so good with their agriculture. Their mangoes are so sweet, so nice, so beautiful, unlike the Malaysian mango. <laughs> but thank you for coming. You bless us. Our mango becomes nice. <laughs> so a mango seed, if you plant on the heap of a rubbish, you plant Mm -mm. Then it will grow, it germinate, it will grow. What fruit does it produce? Rubbish? No, it's always mango because of its nature. And that seed in you also the same. If you have the seed of Christ in you, wherever you go, you illuminate others with Christ in you. Not rubbish. Amen? Yes. That's why whatever the environment, the situation, it can never change the seed. It is the seed that God gave. It's very powerful. I give you one story here. You can see this, I think, in the documentary film, but many years ago, maybe 30, 35 years ago. There is a family. He has two children, two sons. One, the older, was born normal. The second one, the younger brother, is a twin. But the other one did not make it. He died. This one survived. But partially blind. Mentally not good. Because of the oxygen taken by the twin brother who died. So he was not successful in terms of schooling. Because of his situation and state of his body. 
he was weak and he cannot focus too much he cannot see partially blind so we call it a handicap and many people suggested that they should put him in a mental institution but the parents choose to raise this boy because they love him so much so every week there is a piano teacher who comes and teach the older brother playing how to play the piano so after certain months many months went by one day the teacher came and taught the brother older brother again and after playing probably about one and a half hour they adjourn to the kitchen with the family and they want to eat but this boy that is handicapped struggle himself to the piano and he start banging the keyboard or the key you know making sound uh, all the bad sound but the family did not stop him he says okay let him be so he was playing boom bam boom bam boom bam but after a while he's making a decent nice melody what he hear from the teacher teaching the older brother suddenly the family came out from the kitchen the teacher sat beside him and start playing and the boy also play and continue and continue and the music becomes so beautiful that even the teacher play Mozart Beethoven and he plays too until the teacher cannot teach him they have to bring a record and play the record and he has to play according to the record even that the record also give up <laughs> you see when God create us he put that seed in us everyone that God created with the seed from his throne is not a waste is not a waste but are you still holding that vision the mission that faith that purpose that god call us to be in the book of genesis chapter 1 he told adam i created you in my image be fruitful multiply and indeed adam did that but are we continuing we are in the ministry now we are in the church now and we are in asia to reach out and harvest asia with the lord are you still doing or are you throwing the towel? This morning we heard some testimony. Because the father is a pastor, he also becomes a pastor. And the two brothers. But because they love the Lord so much, so they want to follow the father and serve the Lord as a pastor and use the gift and the talent and the money they make to build the church of God. And along the way, I don't know whether the vision ran away or they ran away from the vision. <laughs> so I don't know. But thank God for my Mr. Cool. He came with a superb illustration. He carried his knapsack. And I don't know how many kilo of gold. <laughs> I do see it's heavy, man. 
I said, Rosma already been apprehended <laughs> with so much gold and earring and whatever. And there is my friend carrying gold again. <laughs> and he's teaching us, unburdened. <laughs> but he's not unburdening himself, he carry also. I said, Lord, are we listening to a false prophet or false teacher here? <laughs> so, but anyway, he did it. Yeah. It's a very powerful, significant exhortation for such a short time like that. Because this man, he spent hours looking at the face of the king of kings. What he spoke, very profound. Asia, Malaysia, is going to be that mission sending, equipping, training country for Asia. Malaysian, I'm talking to you, Malaysian. We miss some of that already. Many, many years passed by. We miss to impart and train the Bangladeshis, the Myanmaris, and so many more. The Vietnamese. We abuse them. We treat them like nobody. Let's repent. Come back to the vision again. Come back to the purpose. And that's why we are in Malaysia, Penang. Because of this man. Pray for him. Yeah, even though his dark skin might not turn white, but <laughs> at least God will use him. Okay? Just pray for him. Even though his skin still stay dark, it's all right. Yeah. I have an Indian pastor friend. He used to come and join me ministry in Sarawak. And sometimes the church just put us in a room where there is two bed. So two bed, one for me, one for him. And in a day, he took shower seven times. <laughs> and I always remind him, Pastor, how many times already you have taken your shower? <laughs> seven times. I said, stop taking shower. He says, why? Your skin is still dark. <laughs> oh, he was angry with me. He says, you are the only pastor who always correct me. Because that is the truth. I said, I'm only speaking the truth. Because the fourth year I saw him still dark. What's the point taking shower more? Hallelujah. The seed that is in us, nothing can destroy that. It's only your mind, your thoughts, your feeling, your emotion will always say the negative about you. But God says, I created you in my image. The only problem is, that likeness of God has not been completed or done in you. That likeness must be imparted to each one of us. We must have that likeness so that wherever you go, you have that dominion power. You know, while on earth 2,000 years ago, Jesus forgave the sinners. Jesus loved the people. He heals the sick. He feed the hungry. He forgive the adulterous woman. He asked the Father to forgive those people who crucified him. Amen? But there is one thing that Jesus is very short-tempered. Uncompassionate. Mark 11 verse 12 to 14 
He is very, very, very short-tempered on this one. Mark 11, you see? Now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. Gutum na siya. Now the... Oh, 13. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he could find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. Bukan musim lah, not the season of fruiting. That's why I, I was watching around, looking around in Penang. I never saw any durian. <laughs> not the season. Okay, 14. In response, Jesus said to it, he said to the fig tree, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciple heard it. He cursed the unfruitful tree. Verse 20. It's so good when you have a big screen, huh? Hmm, very nice. How I wish all the Borneo churches have this. <laughs> now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Right, finito. 21. And Peter remembering said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you curse has withered away. My brothers and sisters, beautiful people of God, if you don't bear fruit, you are not the friend of Jesus. Maybe he might curse. I don't know. Bring this home. Tell Jesus every day that you are fruitful. You are going to have lots of fruit. ARC, this vision, Asia, we claim that fruit for Jesus. Amen? Amen? We claim that fruit for Jesus. Pray. Because adulterous Lazarus that is dead, Jesus raised him from the dead. 5,000 hungry people minus the Woman and the children, he fed them. The people who hang him, he asked Father in heaven to forgive. But unfruitfulness, he is unmerciful. Even though it is not the season of figs, but still it withered out anyway. He cursed. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, joke aside, be fruitful. That responsibility is in you and in me. Let us do our part that Terence will have a friend, that we will reach out Asia together. He was teaching about family, right? Let's bring that. He's teaching about kingdom, right? Let's share the kingdom of God together. Let us not fight anymore. We are one. Let us not look down on anyone that is your brother. He is the image of God. Let us build and rebuild and rebuild the likeness inside us like God. Amen? Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. It's almost seven. I have 15 minutes. <laughs> but we will do it anyway. I have my backup soldiers behind. 
they are generals. So my brothers and sisters in the Lord, I don't know your life. I don't know your ministry. But if you have been experiencing all the struggle, all the pain, all the hurts, all the rejection, all the unfruitfulness, whether it is in business, whether it is in your vocation, whether it is your ministry, your church, whether it is your family. If you have experienced all this while that dryness and also that unfruitfulness, I believe Jesus is here to release his fruitfulness to us. Amen. Let's change that. Unfruitful become fruitful. Amen. Let us call upon heaven that he release the fruitfulness Amen. upon each one of us. Amen. We have pastors here, so many, they can pray each one of us very fast. I call upon the praise and worship team and there is this song that I believe every one of us know. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Come on, stand up. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Come on, worship him. Yes, we worship the Lord with this song. Come on. Power. Yes. Leave your voice to the Lord like our prayer. And I, I call upon those who are struggling. Those who wants fruit. Come, come forward here. Come. Yes, come. In the name of Jesus. Come on. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, come. Yes. Hallelujah. Come, pa Pastor Cool, Pastor Terrence, come on. Come on, Christy. We want Pastor body Kim. catches. Hey, Kim, is it? And after this, you can go for your dinner. Yes. And the cafeteria, okay? Break every chain. Okay. Break Break every every chain. chain. Come on, come on. Come on. Yes. Let's worship the Lord. There is Power. There yes, yes, yes. Start praying Jesus. for them. Pray for them, Pastor. Yes. In the name of Jesus. There is power. Yes. In the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yes. Oh, yes, Lord. Break Oh, yes. Power. 
thank you, Father, that every chain is broken. We thank you, Lord, that every curse upon our life, every inherited curse, every genetic curse, every generational curse, every poverty curse, every spiritual curse, every word curses, and every curse that is caused by disobedience. Is broken tonight by the power of the blood and the power of the name that's above every other name. And tonight we are free, we are liberated. Tonight is Madeka for the children of God, for the church and the body of Christ. It's a new season and a new beginning, and new branches and new fruits will bear. Oh, it will come forth. In your life, in your business, in your ministry, in your family, in everything that you lay hand on, the favor of the Lord will cause it to produce fruits. Seal it, O oh Lord. Now, people of God, please hear this instruction carefully. There is dinner being served at the cafeteria, but we are the hosts. We are the Malaysians, right? So we want our guests, all those guests from the Philippines and Thailand, to please go to the cafeteria first. All right, we can go now. The food is already blessed. Don't have to intercede for the food. And when you go to the cafeteria, don't take the food. Just go and sit on your table. We will serve you. Hallelujah! People will serve you. We are here to serve you. All right. So go to the tables and sit down on the table. They will serve you. So the foreign delegates from Philippines, from Thailand, from Ipoh, Ipoh, KL. If you are not from Penang, you go first. Then after that, those who are from Penang. Women, go first. Hallelujah. Men are gentlemen. Families, go first. 